Okay. In the last video, we set up Drizzle with our Neon DB database, which is a Postgres database. So in this video, now finally we are going to connect it to our next auth, uh, next next app using next auth, which we didn't. We haven't can actually connected to it. We migrated all the schemas required for next auth with Drizzle right here. We created a DB and a schema file from documentation. We just took it, but we didn't imp we didn't give it um we didn't connect it to our next app. That's what we're going to do now. We're going to connect it to our next app. Let's go to our next auth documentation and check out how to do it in next 13. I don't know how to do it. Okay, if you're using next 13.2, so we are using more than next 13.2. So we'll have to go to their guide. All right, so this is handling it with next 13. So we'll have to create this right here. So we'll do that. Let's copy this path here directly so we can just paste it in our app. Go to app. Let's create a new file and paste this path right here. Done. And over here, we will take this and we will paste it. Let's remove that. We don't even have next dots. <laughs> Let's stop everything. Let's take this and turn it into auth option. So, and let's give it auth option is all right. This is not assignable, but we can extract this into its own folder lib, which will be auth.es export const auth.es import auth from here, but it is not assignable. Let's give it a type, which is next auth options. Let's give it a provider. Uh, we'll be using Google provider um, for this because I have a Google account with client token with the client and the you know those tokens i have it ready right now client and secret key so i'm going to give it a google provider to get my google provider right here let's import a google provider from next dot google but now we have the provider but we have to also provide it an adapter right uh, how will it contact our database so we'll use an adapter right here and it is PG as GitHub Copilot is telling us, but it is not exact. So let's add, let's see if there's a Drizzle provider. There doesn't seem to be a Drizzle adapter right here. Where do we get the Drizzle adapter from? We'll have to write this right here. Let's check out the documentation again. And there it is. There is the Drizzle adapter. Let's add it. And from this right here, we can then get the Drizzle adapter. Now this is going to cause some type issue. We can just ignore it right now. Type script gives us some errors sometimes that we might as well ignore. So uh, I've done this before, so I know that this is this can be ignorable. There's just some mistake in the code and uh, the Tizzle adapter code. And now it works, but Tizzle adapter won't work without any database connection to adapt to you know what i mean uh, so you also have to give it a db so we take the db and we'll give the db right here from our you just i hope you remember where this comes from this comes from our whole postgres setup that we did in, in the last section of this uh, tutorial let's do that let's do that the last part would be entering a client id and client secret i hope that you can do it yourself i'm not going to guide you through everything you should be able to google things go to youtube check out how to do it you know, give some other people some views as well. Um, check out how to get a client ID and client secret from Google console. So I'm going to do it right now myself. I'm going to take my uh, secret codes and paste it right here. So I've pasted my Google client ID and secret over here. I've also pasted um, next auth secret and next auth URL. So I can just show you right here what those are. This is not something that I want to hide. So I'll just show it to you right here. So my next auth secret is just a random sequence of characters. And my next auth URL is HTTP local host 3000. They are just be best practices. Next auth secret will stop you from actually using the authentication service. So this is um, a must have. You can't work without this. And next auth URL is, I guess, optional. But if it causes any problems, please add it to the .env file. And it should not cause any problems after that. So uh, once we have that, okay. So now um, our design adapter is ad has adapted to the whole thing. Let's try and run this app. Uh, but before that, how are we supposed to sign in, right? So let's go to our um, source file. Let's create a new component. 
we are, since we are not using client components anymore, we also have to specify where we will, where the sign in page will live and where the sign out page will live, you know, things like that. So let's uh, give it that as well. So let's just squeeze in and sign in can be at all sign in or just sign in will work. Let's go to our app directory and create a new page, which is basically, let's give it store it under auth and then we will use a sign in folder which will have a page.psx and that should create a new page in the sign in let's create a new component right here which is going to be sign in i'm going to get my sign in component and then this page will take sign in component and I'll get the sign in component next, which is just a simple component from here. Sign in component is a simple component that takes this and use of auth form is a client component which handles all of our things for us. So if we go over here and we just import sign in, we will be able to import sign in and this is not a problem anymore. And now we can create a client component and the components folder. So let's go to components and let's create the user or form .fx. and over here we will create a client component which handles everything for us. So we don't have the toast installed in our entire thing. We won't use, um, let's install post. All right. So we can go over here and let's go to chat CN. Let's run our executable that will install our component for us. For this to work, we also need to add a toaster to our uh, main layout. So let's go to our main layout. Okay, now every file is happy. So let's run our app again. Let's go to our main page. Let's remove everything that the Next.js boilerplate gives us. And in the main page, we will use our sign-in component, basically, which will guide us to the sign-in page that we just uh, created. Let's add the link from next link. Get the button from Shatian. And uh, hopefully, if everything goes right, we will be redirected to our Next.js page. Uh, next year sign in page which will sign us in uh, before i forget of course uh, also we should go to lib auth and we should also export function get um auth question this should be a And this get auth session will fetch the sign in data, the authenticated data on the server itself. We don't have to do it on the client using hooks. So let's do that. Auth session equals to get auth session, uh, await get auth session. Let's turn it into an async function and that should be it. Now there's a proper server component. Let's go to our main page and yeah, th that should be it. And let's use B and yeah, I mean, that's a good guess. Let's refresh it. All right. So now, right now our session is null. Uh, our, all our tables have been pushed to our database as well. Hopefully, yes. All right. Everything should be set up right around, right about now. Let's hope for the best. Let's sign in. Okay. Now we are directed to the sign in page. As you can see, let's sign in with Google. All right, let's sign in with my account and it doesn't work. So there is an error. Let's see what the error is. Oh, oh, the endpoint was not found. Maybe my database uh, is the wrong one. My, oh, my database URI is wrong, I guess. I'll just replace it with the new one. This is the old one and what I just remembered is that I haven't given it a secret either. So let's give it a secret. Which is not auth secret, it is secret. Uh, just for the sake of it, let's import .env as well. 
config and that should take care of our environment variables and let's try that again let's restart our server we also didn't mention a session strategy as in how to store our um token but let's try it nevertheless let me go to another page and let me try it sign with my google account and let's see if that works all right see that that was a problem i haven't even used a session strategy or anything like that i haven't enforced it at least and it just works it just works it just doesn't want it but the problem is it just gives name email and image to our uh, whole thing we don't we need more than that we need to add a username we need to add um i guess an id i need the id of the user as well um so that's yeah, I won't, I won't do those things. How am I going to do that? Right? 